um, now we have plenty of time for uh, questions. Uh, if someone has to ask a clarification, curiosity about what Michael presented to us, this is the first lecture of four by Michael, and uh, he will have um, plenty of time to explain what is quantum computation. Today he gave us uh, the prerequisite to speak about quantum computation, but if there are problems, curiosity, we have plenty of time to speak about his uh, two first parts of uh, his presentation. I, I, okay, Mirko, no. Uh, if no one asks anything, I have a couple of, uh, of uh, uh, questions about your presentation. One is this, uh, about uh, this, this question concerns the first part of your, of your talk, that is uh, the, the complexity theory. I, I, I wonder why, uh, when we speak about uh, the probabilistic uh, notion of uh, complexity, uh, you say that uh, we must have a certain probability to, to, to get the result, the correct result, and the probability could be two thirds or, or more. And uh, I asked if uh, it would be better uh, in, in defining this kind of uh, notion to use uh, a confidence interval. It is normally, one, one could say, uh, as in, in many other statistical situations, there is a a 95% uh, uh, probability to, to get the result uh, in, in a certain interval. And, uh, and it is clear that this interval, uh, bigger, bigger is the interval uh, and less uh, adequate is the algorithm. Is it possible to define this kind of, uh, of notion of probabilistic uh, polynomial time in this, in this different? I think, to, for instance, to, to, to the use of uh, uh, probabilistic method in, uh, in calculations that, like uh, the Monte Carlo method that is uh, intrinsically probabilistic uh, and perhaps to, to evaluate this kind of, uh, of algorithm uh, an interval of confidence would be, would be better. Uh, this is a question concerning the, the first part of your talk. Mm -hmm. Concerning the second part, um, Rossella, uh, uh, who, who spoke in the morning, uh, has uh, just translated in Italian his wonderful papers by von Neumann at the end of, of 20, uh, in which von Neumann, uh, together with Hilbert, decided to put quantum mechanics in Hilbert space, and no one and, and everyone after this decision by, by von Neumann and Hilbert uh, changes the idea, no? This is some sort, sort of uh, uh, something irreversible from, from, from conceptual point of view. And uh, uh, this is made because we know that, um, we know that uh, uh, psi function uh, are function and so, uh, Functional space like Hilbert space is, is, is the adequate place where this kind of, uh, of state can lead. But uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, has had a, a couple of consequences that are very, that are incredible. One consequence is, is the tensor product, that is, uh, when you have to combine uh, uh, Hilbert spaces uh, for speaking about uh, composite systems. Uh, uh, you have this, this very strange uh, situation in which uh, you have states that are not factorizable. And this is a consequence of the mathematical formalism. And we know now in a very clear way that is also a, a, a reality. It's something that nature decided to use, this possibility of, <laughs> of the combination of the Hilbert space. But, but when von Neumann decided to do this, probably he was not uh, aware of what the, no, aware from a mathematical point of view, surely, but not aware from a physical point of view of the fact that uh, uh, 
uh, quantum mechanics uh, uh, will confirm completely after the uh, violation of, of Bell inequality. And uh, an another important consequence is that uh, what in a certain sense was uh, in Euclidean spaces where normally was, was done physics before, before quantum mechanics, uh, a different representation in different coordinates uh, is not so important. It is so irrelevant that from Galilei to Einstein, physicists attempt in all ways to to do physics in an intrinsical way, that is, uh, uh, in a relativistic way, that is, uh, uh, forgetting the, the frame of reference. On the contrary, in the, the Hilbert space, the, the, the basis uh, of which you, you spoke are very important because the basis is the representation is, in a certain sense, a choice uh, by the observer, by the experimenter, to measure or to, or to prepare the state in a certain way. So it is something uh, not, it not, it, it is not only representation, it's also an operation in a certain sense. So there is a, pro, a deep change of mind in this. Uh, you, if you can say something about this, uh, this couple of points, uh, thank you very much, uh, Michael. Sure, okay. Uh, I'll start with the first one. Uh, if it's a little, there's a little bit more straightforward, and I'll think about the second one as I as I'm answering the first one. So uh, let me let me just go back to my go back to my slides. Um, okay. So the the question was essentially why are we using uh, why are we using uh, this definition, why shouldn't we, why shouldn't we use something different, maybe a bit more, uh, a bit more fine grained, uh, a bit more appropriate to a particular task at hand. And, um, my answer is that I, I, I completely, that's a good question. I completely endorse, uh, the, the, what, what you're getting at. Uh, at the same time, I don't think there's anything wrong with what complexity theorists are doing. So, <clears throat> um, Ultimately, it's ultimately it's a balancing act. We want to have. I'm going to get into this a little bit more tomorrow in my first lecture, but uh, ultimately, it's a, ultimately it's a balancing act. We want a formal definition that enables us to usefully classify the conceptual space of problems of computational problems. And so, when we want to speak as generally as possible. Uh, it's going to invariably be the case that we're going to need rather coarse-grained complexity classes. So one good thing about polynomial, uh, about about uh, about about polynomial complexity class is that, like I said before, so if you have if you have a if you have a polynomial algorithm that calls another polynomial subroutine, the result is polynomial, it's still polynomial, right? So like the uh, you don't get out of the class. So that's that's one good thing. Uh, one good one good. Uh, one good aspect to this way of distinguishing them. And um, in some cases when we're talking about, so if we're actually like, if we're actually solving a particular instantiation of a problem, then it's, it's not likely. So if you're, if, if you're actually programming, you know, for a living, you know, like it, it's not likely that computational complexity theory and, and, and the abstract, abstract theoretical form is going to help you that much. What you want more are, uh, are techniques that come from algorithm design in particular, right? And so these large complexity classes are useful from a theoretical point of view, but often in practice, what's more useful is individual classes like this. Right, so we want to talk about. It makes a big difference in practice whether whether an algorithm is uh, it takes n cubed or n square steps to complete, and it makes a di big difference in practice. So we don't necessarily we aren't necessarily able to run an algorithm many 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 times over. It makes a big big difference in practice rather than uh, expressing uh, expressing something in terms of a probability in this way. It might be more useful. In, in a given context to, to talk about a confidence interval, like you said. Essentially, it depends on what you're trying to do. It depends on what task you're trying to achieve. 
And there are many areas of computer science that use different, that, that have different ways of characterizing the distinctions between processes. So in complexity theory, which is meant to be a very general, uh, general uh, theory, uh, where we don't talk about very fine grained distinctions typically between mm -hmm. between uh, different types of computational models, where we want to speak as generally as possible. And all I can say to answer the question is that this complexity class has been taken to strike the right balance between being useful in, in practice for the types mm -hmm. of problems that complexity theorists want to talk about. Um, and I mean, in, in the sense that it makes useful distinctions and in the, and also in the sense that it's useful as easy to apply, right? So for, so, so another, another example is like, so we could rather, so this is, uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, yeah, so I mentioned this big O notation. This is a worst case measure, mm -hmm. right? So in many cases, in many particular cases, you know, like when, when you're talking about well-defined, like, like if you're talking completely generally, it makes sense to talk about worst case because you don't necessarily know what the actual case is going to look like. But if you're talking about a much more restrictive subset of computational problem, it'll make sense to use not necessarily big O, not necessarily upper bound, but you might want to use lower bound or average case complexity theory. Mm -hmm. And there are techniques for doing that in complexity theory, and but those typically find a place in algorithmic design. Yeah rather than complexity theory in the most abstract sense. And so there, there, there are different ways to classify computational problems. But in the most general sense, that's, that's, that's try, that's, that complexity theorists try to capture, they find that these uh, defining uh, complexity theory, theoretic classes in this way is the most useful. So like whether, whether this actually is the most useful, that's a further argument uh, that one can have uh, I mean, I, I'm inclined to believe them, but I mean, that, but that's, yeah, that's, 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 that's a, like for the most general class, a case that we want to talk about in complexity theory, I think this is a very useful way of characterizing problems, but there's an argument to be had. And it's not a bad thing that there is an argument to be had because these, uh, these complexity classes are not meant to identify metaphysical entities in some sense you know it's mm -hmm. like we're not trying to like pick out some some class bpp that exists out there in some mind independent sure. world right mm -hmm. we're trying to we're trying to delineate the conceptual space of computational problems in a, in a way in a useful way in a way that allows us to think about them fruitfully Maybe I'll let you, uh, I'll ask if you're satisfied with that before I go on to the second question. No, 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 okay, okay, I understood. It is not, it is, the, the, the value of this kind of, uh, of definition is more theoretical in computer science than uh, from than practical. So this yes, understood the point. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So for the, for the second question, I mean, it's, it's hard for me to identify, it seems like there was a, a there are many questions rolled into one in there. Yes. Uh, um, in terms of the arbitrary, like the choice of Hilbert space, um, I mean, it's arbitrary in some sense. At the same time, uh, I mean, there's Gleason's theorem, which I mean, of course, it has limited. Uh, import because it, it it only talks about the formalism of quantum mechanics. It doesn't talk about uh, uh, it. It doesn't consider hidden variables theories or, or things like that. But nevertheless, in terms of if you talk about the if you talk about a probable probability measure associated with um, with some sub subspace, that's going to be captured uh, by the density operator for a quantum system and vice versa, right? And so you have a nice it's, it's it's not just arbitrary. There's something that you're really that you're really capturing mm -hmm. there. Even if it, even if it's only, as you were alluding to in the second part of that question, it's only really it only really captures uh, an observation. It doesn't actually it doesn't necessarily capture mm -hmm. some mind independent uh, aspect of the system, perhaps, right? And um, I don't disagree with what you said. I have my own ideas about the interpretation of quantum mechanics, which I'm not. Uh, I'm not 
sure that would be it, it would be useful to get into right get into right here. Um, but um, if you want a quick one line summary, is my answer to your to, to, the, to the second part of that question was yes, and it's a good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. 